Now let's look at the second stream for this practice where thread modeling comes into play. What does good look like for thread modeling? Well, first of all, consistency is a key element in thread modeling. There are a lot of different ways to do thread modeling. There is no one right way. There is the way that works for your organization. So you gotta use consistent language and consistent representations. Security requirements that arise from thread modeling are consequential. Requirements identified as a consequence of wanting the software to do something. Once identified, they are just requirements. So they just need to be implemented. There is nothing special about it, just a requirement. Prioritize like the others, think about dependencies and so on and so forth. Security requirement is part of the definition of done for a shiny feature and that's it. Testing needs to be done for it, just like any other requirement. Security is a bit of a hurdle to get over. A lot of development teams think of security as something that is imposed on them. There's a little bit of the mentality of trying to get out of it as it is somewhat extra work. But going through the threat modeling process and having the architects and the developers recognize, oh, we need this. It makes the whole thing lose its stigma and it becomes just another requirement. Finally, you need to make sure that the models and the process to thread model are reviewed themselves and updated regularly. If you start with thread modeling at your uh, business unit or your organization, initially it is always going to be a little bit of a pain. However, it is essential to go to that model and make sure that rather than being a pain, it is actually a fun activity that people love to do. So it's optimized, it is targeted, and it's absolutely not boring at all and not burdensome. At level one, the criterion is, are you using thread modeling? and you perform thread modeling only for high-risk applications at level one. This is to some extent a prerequisite of having implemented application risk profiles at least in its basic form to know what the high-risk applications are. At level one, you are using something very straightforward as a methodology or an approach, could be simple thread checklists or could be Stride in combination with Linden. If you don't know Stride and Linden, please look it up. One of the most essential quality criteria here is to persist the outcome. It has to be in a repository and in a format where others can open and view it. It shouldn't be on one person's laptop or in someone's head. Moving to maturity level two, the question is whether you have a consistent methodology across the set of applications that you're working on within scope and even across the entire organization. The first quality criteria requires that everyone is trained, everyone involved in the whole development lifecycle is trained on how to use the process and how to do thread modeling. You should include at least diagramming, thread identification, mitigations, and how you're going to validate the model itself. These actually happen to be Adam Shostak's four questions on that define threat modeling. The four questions are, what are we working on? What can go wrong? What are we going to do about it? And have we done a good enough job? Changes in the application or business context need to trigger a review of the threat model. There is sort of a first level review exercise that simply checks when a change has occurred, does that change affect the model? And does, does it necessitate changes to the thread model? And that could be a simple yes or no answer. Now, if the answer is yes though, there needs to be some effort allocated for updates to the model. The Good thing about this quality criteria is that it also incorporates the idea of incremental thread modeling, 
or if you haven't done any thread modeling before for a given system and you're gonna start doing it. So every time we're doing a sprint planning and we discuss the changes being made, there should be the question whether this affects the application's thread model. That last part says that thread modeling artifacts need to be captured with tools that the application teams can use. What's being introduced at level three is the review and optimization activity. We have identified the risks. We've got thread models that are being created and updated and being used. The last level says that the entire process undergoes a regular review. Is the methodology still working for you? Are there models that haven't been looked at because there have been no system changes, but perhaps the state of play has changed? And then you've started automating certain tasks to make sure that it is getting more streamlined and becomes more scalable. 